Welcome to Crema Media's Resources Watch, a weekly video roundup of the events and people making and shaping the news in the mining industry. This week, Simmers will close two Buffelsfontein gold mine shafts. The mining declaration is seen as a very important step in the right direction. And Rio Tinto is underinvested in Africa. JSE-listed gold and uranium miner Simmer and Jack Mines has initiated the closure of two more shafts at its Buffelsfontein gold mine in Northwest Province. We have initiated the closing of the 10 shaft complex and the, uh, the remainder of the 12 shaft complex. We have initiated the, the, the process, the uh, section 189 process, whereby um, we engage with the unions um, in terms of what are the best possible measures of uh, dealing with the situation. We had very good support from the unions in that uh, they are highly participative and that they, uh, that they have basically asked that we um, immediately initiate the process of uh, voluntary retrenchments. We do offer um, the employees at Buffersontain, we do offer them the opportunity to be transferred to Ezzelwini. In total at Simmers we're employing in the region of 4,000 people. Um, the, the number of jobs that at present are at risk um, is, is, an, is an unknown and ultimately we will know what that number is once the process is completed but it looks like uh, something in the region of 600 people. We hope to restore um, full production by the end of the second quarter. We are aiming to create an environment whereby we empower, we measure, we reward based on safe, profitable tons. Regulatory lawyer Peter Leon tells Mining Weekly Online's Martin Kremer that the joint mining declaration is a very important step in the right direction, with government, labour and business all being part of the joint venture. It's a very important step that's been taken today and the important thing about it is that it's a, in a sense, a joint venture uh, between the government, labour and business. I'm going to criticise it for being a corporatist approach, but the big change is in the past the DMR, the Department of Mineral Resources, has simply told mining companies what to do through legislation or through regulations. And this is the first time, I think, since the mining charter was agreed back in those difficult days in 2002, that the, the key players in the industry, including Labour, have got together and agreed a way forward for the industry. It's the most significant aspect from my perspective as a regulatory lawyer operating in this industry is a very clear commitment, both in this document and by the Minister today, that uh, the MPRDA, the Mineral Petroleum Resources Development Act, will be substantially amended. We need a strategy which will seek to position the mining industry along a new trajectory of sustainable growth and meaningful transformation. Stakeholders have agreed to establish an integrated long-term infrastructure planning mechanisms for the mining sector. Martin Kremer interviews diversified miner Rio Tinto CEO Tom Albanese, who anticipates the African continent becoming the site of the British-Australian multinational's newest iron ore growth vector. Over the course of the past few months, certainly as a management team, we've been asking ourselves, are we sufficiently invested in, all, in, in Africa? And from my own perspective, I do believe we're underinvested in Africa in, you know, in, the, in the context of the size, the breadth, and the scale of, of a company like Rio Tinto. That's why we have projects um, uh, such as Simindu in, in, in West Africa, where I'd like to be taking that along, and I'd like that to be you know, our newest growth vector in the iron ore business, to supplement the iron ore growth that we have already in, um, in, in the iron ore production we already have in Australia. Logistics for iron ore is an issue in, in Australia. It's an issue everywhere. It's going to be a bigger issue in Guinea. The Pilbara, for example, um, every year we're selling 220 million tons of product. We're talking about in the um, in Guinea, you know, a, a you know, starting production base in the 70 million ton range. So that would be one of the largest um, civil projects needed in Africa. For mining news as it breaks, stay logged on to miningweekly.com and register for our free daily newsletter.